Welcome everyone to Gamer Meld. Today, the largest tech show is moving online. Intel released their new i9, 11th gen performance numbers, the legend weighs in, and AMD's Ryzen 4000G desktop APUs overclocking gaming performance and pricing. But first, if you aren't subscribed and you like the content here, please go ahead and do that and click the bell icon for notifications. I see that over 70% of my viewers aren't subscribed, so definitely make sure to do that so you can stay up with all things gaming hardware. Okay, it's news time, and first up for today, if you thought the largest tech show of the year was immune to the thing that shall not be named, think again. That's right, the Consumer Electronics Show has been cancelled, or at least the way we knew it. According to a press release sent out today, CES is going all digital. What that ultimately means as far as how companies will react is tough to say, but I guess as always, time will tell. Next up for today, the leaks were right, as Intel officially announced their new i9-10850K. The new 10-core 20-thread CPU looks to be a response to AMD's newest XT processors, sort of. It's essentially a 10900K but comes with 100MHz slower boost clock for $35 less. Obviously, that isn't much of a difference in performance or price. It's a very tiny gap they're trying to fill, but I'm assuming they may be having an issue getting enough processors up to that 5.3 gigahertz since they're pushing them so hard anyway. Still, it is a bit cheaper, and with the right thermals, you could potentially overclock it a decent bit higher. Of course, 10th Gen hasn't really been that interesting of a release. If anything, I've been waiting to hear more on Rocket Lake, which is set to be Intel's 11th Gen processors. And yes, it's still on 14 nanometers, but Rocket Lake is finally set to move past their Skylake architecture. That means an IPC increase, and according to a recent post by RO Game, we finally have an idea of what that is, though I've got to say that I'm a bit disappointed. As you can see, according to him, we can expect around a 10% IPC increase, give or take a few percent. Don't forget that IPC is application dependent, so it can get more in some and less in others. As I said, I am a bit disappointed, but not exactly surprised. While this is a new core design, it's still on 14 nanometers, so to expect even an ice lake increase would be a bit too optimistic. Luckily, we are still looking at at least 5 GHz, but given AMD will likely be near 5 nanometers by then, Intel is definitely in trouble. Next up for today, in the seemingly never-ending console wars, it looks like the man himself, the legend, Mr. Gabe Newell from Valve, decided to weigh in during a discussion with the Project NZ. In the video, he was asked which console was better, to which he said this. Uh, the Xbox. Really? Why? Uh, because it is. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you have it. From the man himself, though of course I would be remiss not to mention that his stakes is in PCs, and Microsoft is continuing their push for releasing games on both the Xbox and PCs, so he could have a bias there. With that said, I have no doubt that's really his opinion, PC aside. At the end of the day, the battle between fanboys will likely never end, but at least we know what Mr. Newell thinks. Lastly for today, AMD's Ryzen 4000 APUs were recently released a few days ago. Of course, they were only released for OEMs and system builders. Luckily, AMD has more or less confirmed that they are coming to the DIY market. In the meantime, we're getting benchmarks for the new APUs, and they're seriously turning out to get some impressive performance. Starting things off, we already have some big overclocking world records with the Pro 4750G getting an all-core overclock of 5.8 GHz on liquid nitrogen by TSAIK. Unfortunately, he had to take off multi-threading to do it, but that's definitely still impressive. Next, we have an overclock from BN Bao, hopefully I pronounced that one right. Either way, he achieved a memory overclock of 6234 on 8GB of DDR4 memory. Of course, if overclocking records isn't really your thing, we have some very impressive gaming benchmarks on the non-pro 4700G. Don't forget that the 4700G comes with an 8-core 16-thread CPU and 8 7nm Vega cores for the iGPU. When it comes to the benchmarks, the channel Tech Epiphany ran it through quite a few games. Starting things off, it was able to get around 30 FPS at 1080p and Death Stranding on high settings. Next, it actually got between 40 and 70 FPS in Doom Eternal at 1080p on high settings, and finally it got about 40 FPS in Gears of War 5 at medium settings on 1080p. Of course, this isn't winning any benchmark records, but given we have pricing from video cards and the 4750G is only $309, that's unbelievable. 
Remember that the 3700X launched at $330, and this is essentially that with an iGBU for less. Of course, the 3700X is cheaper now, but still, this is definitely nothing to scoff at. So while that does it for today, are you waiting for the 4000G series to come to the DIY market, or are you just ready for 11th gen Intel? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please subscribe, and as always, have a great day!